How fast do you think you can map your route to financial independence using just a pen, a piece of paper and a calculator? Most think that making a plan is complicated, but I've helped hundreds of people use this one page plan to get clarity in just five minutes. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it yourself, whatever your age or experience, with some very easy steps. I'll also tell you the one golden rule that will guarantee to keep you on track. Time, as we all know, is a finite commodity. And like anything else, as it becomes more scarce, it becomes more valuable. So we need a plan that will allow us to own more of our future time. If you don't know what life will cost in 10 or 20 years though, or even what you want, how can you set a target? Well, what I always say to people is this, I can't tell you what you want, but a better can tell you what you don't want. And that's less than what you've got now. To be financially free, you at least need to be able to do what you can do now without having to trade time for money. That's a good place to start. We've probably all set off on a journey somewhere in the past and haven't known the exact address. But as long as we know the area we're heading to, we can put that in our sat nav and work out the finer details when we get closer to our destination. At least then we know we're going in the right direction. So with that in mind, let's say you earn 50K a year now. You might think that's your target, but that's not actually true. What matters is what you take home every month after tax and other deductions, your real spendable income. If you're employed and have a pay slip, you may just be able to multiply your monthly take home pay by 12 and that will give you your real annual income, your net income. If your pay varies, just use a free tool like the salarycalculator.co.uk to get your net pay for the year. Now on a £50,000 salary, your net pay, assuming the minimum statutory pension contribution, would be around £37,769 in the current tax year. Over £10,000 is being taken from you in tax and national insurance. But the great thing is, by using things like pensions and ISAs, you can keep more of your money and pay less tax, maybe even zero tax. So suddenly, your independence target is closer than you thought. Once you've got your net income target, grab a blank piece of paper, a pen and a calculator. That's all you'll need to kick this off. If you're in a couple, by the way, it's best to do this together. But for now, we'll assume you're flying solo. Write down that net income target as your goal and how many years from now you want to be financially free. So far, working this out will have taken you about a minute, but we now need to refine the target slightly because your future spending might be a lot less than it is today. Your mortgage, for example, might only have 15 years left on it. Car costs could be lower in the future, perhaps because you need a larger car at the moment and you prefer a luxury brand. But like many pensioners, you may be struck with a sudden strange and compelling urge to buy a Honda Jazz. If your kids are at home, they might be off living their own lives by then. Go through your bank statement and see if you can spot these future savings. The average UK mortgage eats up a fifth of take home pay. So that would be about seven and a half thousand pounds a year in this example. If we knock this and other soon to disappear costs off the target, it wouldn't be unreasonable for it to drop from 37,000 to something like 25,000 pounds. Try this for yourself and jot down your new reduced goal. I'll use 25,000 pounds. Now, before you move on, you may want to think about what you'd like to spend more on. Holidays, for example. It's your plan, your rules. Remember though, always work in today's prices. Don't try and guess what things will cost in 20 years time. On that point though, it's time to move to the next crucial step. Like I said at the start, we don't know how much things are going to cost in the future, but we do know it will be more than they cost now. We therefore need to adjust for this in our plan by building in an inflation assumption. But how much should we increase the target by? Well, central banks like the Bank of England aim for 2% inflation. But as we've seen in recent times, reality often runs higher. So let's play it safe and use 3%. That way, you're more likely to have too much, not too little. Now, there's a very easy way to work this out with a basic calculator. If we're doing 3% inflation, type 1.03, multiply by our target, £25,000, then hit equals 20 times, once for each year. You'll see the number grow to £45,152. And that's what you'll need in 20 years to match today's buying power. If you're using a phone calculator, by the way, you do it slightly differently. Switch your calculator to scientific mode and type 1.03, then tap 
the power button, which is this X with a little Y above it. Enter 20 for 20 years, then equals. Multiply that by 25,000, and there's your answer. One thing I'll say about inflation is don't be overly influenced by what we call recency bias. Sometimes, when we're bombarded with constant headlines about how high inflation is, we have a natural tendency to think that's going to last forever. We do sometimes have spikes, like when the Consumer Prices Index, which is a common measure of inflation in the UK, reached 11.1% in 2022. It went even higher than that in the late 70s and early 80s. But over long periods of time, it's been much lower. The average rate since 1751 in this country has been 2.09%. So now we've got an adjusted target to aim for, all in the space of a few minutes. But the question now is, how much money do I need to generate that income? Well, if we're creating a simple plan, we need a simple rule. And as good a starting point as any is the 4% rule. Now, this was first proposed by a guy called Bill Bengen in 1994, and then backed up by a group of professors a few years later in what's known as the Trinity Study. And it puts forth the idea that 4% is a safe annual withdrawal rate from an investment portfolio split equally between stocks and bonds. When they went back over many years, they found that by taking that amount every year and increasing it by inflation, you'd have a very high probability of never running out of money. Now, let's be clear. This rule isn't perfect. For starters, it was only based on US market data. Other markets would have driven slightly different results. It also only used a 30-year investment period, which nowadays might not be long enough. And it doesn't account for how spending habits change. Some years you might want to spend more and some less. But I'll show you how you can account for those things a little later. For now, we're just looking for a benchmark that we can start taking action towards. So let's see how this works in practice. To apply this yourself, you start with the income target, which in this example is £45,152, and divide it by 0 0.04. Or even quicker, multiply by 25. It's the same thing. That gives us a capital target of £1,128,819. Sounds a lot, but bear with me. Now, the average global stock market return over the past 30 years, as measured by the MSCI World Index, has been 8.7% a year. But let's go a little bit lower than that and say an average return of 7% a year could be achieved. Still not guaranteed, of course, but we're making assumptions here. And what you do now is use a free savings goal calculator tool, like on the calculatorsite.com, and work out how much you'd need to regularly put aside to reach that target. And starting from zero, you'd work out that figure is £2,167 a month. Easy, he says. Well, on the basis that your monthly take-home pay is about £3,147 on a 50k salary, that would represent over two-thirds of your earnings, which just wouldn't be possible. But instead of throwing in the towel, like many people do at this stage, there are a number of things you can do. First, ask yourself, do you want to completely stop working at, say, 57? Or would shifting to a lighter work schedule, like a three-day week, give you the freedom you want? Remember, this is all about designing a lifestyle you're happy with. Now, it could be three days a week in your current job, or it could be something completely different. But even just at minimum wage, three full days a week today would bring in £14,500 a year after tax. And the minimum wage tends to increase with inflation. So if we increase that amount in the way I showed before and took that away from the target, it would fall dramatically from over £45,000 a year down to just £18,964. That means instead of needing that huge nest egg, you'd only need about £474,100 saved up, which drops the monthly savings target to around £910. And this assumes you're starting from scratch. If you've already managed to build up, say, £50,000 in pensions and other accounts, the required contribution drops to just £538. Suddenly, these numbers feel a lot more achievable. Now, if you invest in an ISA, the money you take out in the future is completely tax-free. That's why you only need to focus on your net income goal. No need to worry about tax eating into your savings. 
But something potentially even better happens when you put money into a pension. The government tops up your contribution with tax relief, which just means they give you back the tax you've paid. If you're earning £50,000 a year, you're a basic rate taxpayer. So if you put in £538 a month, HMRC boosts that to £672.50. Now, it's true that pension income is taxable when you take it out. But the thing is, under the current rules, you can take 25% of your pension pot tax-free. So even after taxes, pensions often come out ahead. I've got a whole video on this and I've put a link to it below if you want the full breakdown. You don't have to just pick one, by the way. ISAs and pensions are both powerful tools in your planning toolbox. If you want to retire early, you'll probably need both because pensions are locked until age 55 and that will soon rise to age 57. But how should you split your money between the two? Well, that depends on your goals and your timeline. Don't worry though, I'll show you how you can easily figure this out in just a moment. As you can see though, when you break it down, setting realistic goals is actually simple and you can get your numbers in less than five minutes. Now, if 20 years feels too long, let's see what happens when you shorten the timeline. Using the same goals as before, you need to put away £1,060 a month over 15 years, or brace yourself, £2,170 a month if you only have 10 years. But if you start young, say with 25 years ahead of you, you only need £222 a month. That's a huge difference. So if you want to do your kids a favour, show them this. Starting early could be the difference between a life of stress and a life of options. But what if you're starting late or you want to reach your goal faster? Well, it's definitely tougher because you don't have compound interest working as hard for you. And that means you might need to boost your income, which probably sounds daunting, but there are lots of ways you can do it. For example, you could make extra money by selling things you don't use or even buying and selling things at a profit. You can rent out space you're not using, your garage for storage, your driveway for parking. You could offer your time to do tasks for people. There are websites for all these things, and I've linked a few in the video description below. Personally, though, I think time is the most precious thing we all have. I've never been a great fan of trading time for money. It's far better if we can be paid for results, which is why the most powerful thing in our armory is our knowledge. Everyone's got something rattling around in their brain that someone else would pay to learn. Maybe you're really good at writing short stories, or you can draw or paint. You might be the next Bob Ross. Hello, I'm Bob Ross. Package that up, teach it, film it, write it down. I've done this myself, as I'll tell you in a minute. And if I can do it with what I know, then you can definitely do it too. And look, I get it, you know, making a course or teaching online sounds like a big job. But here's the truth. Financial independence is simple. It's just not easy. No one's going to hand it to you on a silver platter. But if you're willing to put in the work, you'll be the one with the silver platter. Maybe even the matching cutlery. The good news is, just by taking the simple actions we've covered, you're already ahead of 90% of people. But sooner or later, you'll hit a point where you want to fine-tune your plan. Or maybe you're already there now. The 4% rule is a great starting point, but it has its limitations, like I mentioned before. For example, you may already have rental income from a property. Perhaps you're expecting an inheritance. Maybe you want to plan for a big one-off event, like a round-the-world trip, or you'd like to take more income early on and less later. Finding out the best split between pension and ISA contributions could be something you want to do based on when you're looking to retire. You might even want to see how your plan would stand up to real world market ups and downs. Trying to figure all this out on your own though could feel overwhelming. And most people stop here, not because they don't want the answers, but because they don't have the right tools. So this is where you can level up. I use professional software called Voyant to help people create detailed, robust plans. And you can access the same tools through my course with step-by-step -step video tutorials to guide you. I've put a link to this in the description below. If you're not ready for that though, there are free sites like Honest Math that can help you cover some of these bases, even if they're not quite as comprehensive. Now I said at the start, there's one golden rule when investing for your future, and it's this. 
Whenever you get a substantial pay rise, you must increase the amount you're contributing substantially too. If you don't, the lifestyle you can buy in the future won't be the one you get used to. For the full breakdown I mentioned earlier of how pensions, ISAs and other investment accounts stack up against each other, this is the video you need to watch next. In it, I go into full detail on that subject for you and outline how to work things out when creating a plan for your own unique circumstances. I'll see you there.